watching Sports Beat. Glad to have you aboard tonight. As we await the Super Bowl to help ourselves survive our first Sunday, Spencer, in nearly six months without a real football game, the Jazz were on the court in Minnesota today. Indeed. Oh, and the Jazz have been playing some real basketball. Eight wins in the last nine games type of real, including a four-point home win over the Minnesota Timberwolves on Friday. Tonight, same opponent, different city. Utah's second matchup with Minnesota in the last three days. It's a business trip, well, Rod. Of course it is. Let's see if they come away with a good business deal. Jazz, well, they got cooking early, going a 12-2 run in the first. Joe Ingles bust the three. He dropped in six straight points. And Dirk Favors, Jazz led by three after one. Faves, 11 points, 11 rebounds. Second quarter, Ricky Rubio to George Niang. And the Jazz now lead by seven. Five minutes left in the half. Donovan Mitchell, he drains the long ball for an eight-point lead. But then Jared Bayless would hit back-to-back -back threes in the final 15 seconds of the Jazz. Well, the lead down to five, three at the half. Early in the third, Bayless again. Drops another three. On. That one ties it at 61. Jazz then score eight of the next 10. Ingles to Gobert. Jazz lead back up to six. Rudy finished with 17. Back come the T-Wolves. Luau Dang. Dang it. He hits the three. Now Minnesota's got a one-point lead. Back comes Donovan Mitchell. Fouled up and counted. Jazz back up five, heading to the fourth. Jazz start the fourth with a long ball. Kyle Korver. Somebody guard that guy. No. Ups the lead to eight. A couple of trips later, Korver again. They didn't listen. The lead up to nine. <laughs> Kyle three threes. He had 13 points. A minute later, Rubio will steal it away. And then Ricky, all by his lonesome, finishing it off. Rubio, 18 points, eight assists. Jazz lead is 11. But the Jazz had a 21-point lead in the fourth on Friday at home, and they nearly lost that. I remember. Well, Donovan trying to make sure that this thing's not that close. Drops in another three to keep the lead at 11. But then back comes Carl Anthony Towns. Three ball. The lead down to seven. Towns with 22. And Mitchell on the other end. Got the floater to drop. The lead back up to nine. Andrew Wiggins had a huge night. Comes right back, and the lead back down to seven. Wiggins, a game-high 35, but Mitchell says, all right, enough is enough, and he takes it inside, and the hack, the lead to 10 with a minute and a half to play. Mitchell, 29-22 in the second half, and then Jay Crowder finishing it off with a three, his fifth three of the night. Jazz hit 14 long balls. Jazz with seven players in double figures to win it by 14. All right, they've now won 11 of the last 13. They had a big third quarter. I think, you know, we made a couple adjustments to what they were doing to try to give them some different looks, which we were trying to do anyway. They just, Wiggins was doing a great job of attacking in particular. And I think two things happened. One, you know, we just did what we were doing with more force and more kind of competitiveness. And then there were a few things that our guys really um, were able to kind of adjust and adapt to that, that, that helped them. The hey, Murdoch look, Automotive, no regrets, play of the game. Hey, look, Jazz fans, it's your favorite. Russell Westbrook and the Oklahoma City Thunder, three games up on Utah in the Western Conference standings, hosting the best team in the East, Milwaukee, early second quarter. You just saw Giannis Antetokounmpo. Well, oh, Papa Giannis had that delivery denied. And then Nerlens Noel does it again. Ends up in transition points. Oklahoma City rolling by 15. But it's the fourth quarter, and in the NBA, everybody makes a run. To within four. Those happy feelings, though, end right about now for Giannis. Great clips of the week. Here's George, puts it on the floor, gets past two guys, stuffs it on the three. Paul George with our Murdoch play of the day. He had 36 points. Thunder win, 118-112. You know, the Utah women's basketball team, they've been the surprise team in the Pac-12 uh, this season. A school record 17-1 and to start the year, and they're ranked 21st in the country. This afternoon, the Utes opening a three-game stretch, all against top ten opponents. Up first, sixth-ranked Stanford in the Huntsman Center. Opportunity to Knox for national respect. Knock, knock, knock. This thing back and forth the entire way. Drayuna Edwards giving Utah an early three-point lead, then... Drew Gilton outside for three, and the Utes build a lead to six. After Stanford comes back, take a three-point lead. Megan Huff drops in another three to tie it at 29. Then in the final 30 seconds of the first half, Erica Bean, she busts the three, and the Utes had a one-point lead at half. Second half was all about Erica Bean. 
Bean for buckets in the second half. She kept the Utes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Stanford. And with under three minutes to play, tied at 66, Kiana Moore gives Utah two-point lead. Erica Bean, 20 points in the second half, and here comes the biggest bucket of them all. Okay. A minute left, tied at 68. Bean buries the three, and that turned out to be your game winner. Erica Bean finished with 23. Utes beat number six Stanford for the first time in school history. 75-68 is your final. All right, everybody, just sit back and enjoy this just for a moment. Huh? Holy cow. Uh, Tory Pines, San Diego, final round of the Farmers Insurance Open. Utah's Tony Finau on number two. Jones once again. The old chipper in her for birdie. That's also beautiful. Get 10 under. Second shot now on the par four seventh. Tony had his irons dialed in for most of the day. That's about four feet away. Another birdie. Next hole, the par three eighth. I tell you, he had his irons dialed in. This game's easy, eight. Rod. Yeah, sticks that to about nine feet, then steps up and drains another birdie. Tony. With four straight birdies on the front, one under today, uh, minus 11 for the tournament, uh, tied for 13th. But nobody's going to catch the claw of Justin Rose, the number one player in the world. Got off to a rocky start, then turned it on, birdie on 16, then finishes off with another birdie on 18. Justin Rose wins the Farmers by two shots at 20 on under par. Tiger Woods, by the way, finished tied for 20th, 11 shots back. Oh, yeah, that guy. Now, when we come back, Haloni Nada's dream event for one special little guy. But then we went to the doctor and we figured out that it was cancer. Yes, we will follow along the journey of Nixon Watcott, a once in a lifetime experience made possible by the former Highland Ram and current lineman, Haloti Nata. He fires it. Porter launches. Got it! Abel Porter hit the game winner for the Aggies in New Mexico yesterday, but it's not the first time he's done this. Break open the vault for a gem when we come back. You're watching Sports Beat. All right, each year, former Highland Ram and current NFL defensive tackle Haloti Nada invites a deserving individual and sends him on an all-expense-paid trip to an NFL game. Yeah, this is fantastic. KSL's Jeremiah Jensen introduces us to an eight-year-old from Bluffdale. This year's recipient of the It's Not a Dream event. Haloti Nata met Nixon Watcott at Primary Children's Hospital. Nixon didn't know then that he would reunite with Haloti months later, this time at a Philadelphia Eagles game. An unforgettable weekend of fun for the special young man who has been through so much. Nixon, always growing up, has just been fun. I, he's just fun loving, loves life, loves energy, loves sports. He loved school, loved friends, always just active and never stopped doing anything. Nixon is the third among Nick and Janessa Watcott's four boys, a family that loves sports. Nixon has dreams of playing college football and becoming a Navy SEAL. Nixon particularly has been, I mean, he's been playing flag football since he was four with seven and eight year olds just because that's what, it, you know, our buddies did it and we would just do it for fun and, and he's, uh, He's a good little athlete. While playing sports, Nixon began complaining about leg pain. Typical boy thing, maybe he hit his knee really hard and it was bruised. So we went about three weeks and the pain just was still there. So we decided to go into the doctor and just have it looked at. The Watcots weren't prepared for the news they were about to receive. Well, my mom and dad thought um, it was just growing pains, but then we went to the doctor and we figured out that it was cancer. Nixon was diagnosed with osteosarcoma. He had multiple tumors in his femur. They were malignant, and the cancer had spread to his lungs. Our whole world changed. You no, know, it's more than his leg. This is that, this is, we, we're fighting for Nixon's life at this point. Nixon soon began chemotherapy treatment. He also had his femur removed and underwent a procedure called a rotation plasty. Rotation plasty is, is honestly, in my opinion, just a miracle. Like, instead of true amputation and cutting the leg and cutting and severing nerves, um, you're actually using his own joint. So you, you cut out where, for example, he had the tumor in his femur, you're cutting out the femur, but then you're cutting off, basically you're taking out the knee joint and taking the tibia and fibia and attaching that up to the femur backwards. So his 
his foot is on backwards on his leg and he that is now his knee joint and then you put a prosthesis onto that and um so he's he's literally had to learn how to rewalk um and his brain really has had to rewire his neurons and his in his body of how to make that work properly when he's walking and running. He amazes me at how positive he was through all this. He never once asked, why do I have to do this? He's never once complained um, about anything. I mean, when we started chemo, we were like, hey, this is what we have to do. And he's like, okay. I mean, he's never fought once about having to go get chemotherapy. I mean, he's mentioned that he's sad. He misses his brothers. He doesn't want to go, but he, He's never, he's just been like, okay, this is what I have to do to get better, and he's done it. He just goes, he, he, you know, he's playing basketball right now, he wants to play baseball, and so he, he loves the Navy Seals, and so we always tell him, just keep having a Navy Seal mentality. <laughs> and he does, and he just keeps going, so he's, he's, uh, he's an example for sure, and kind of a reminder for me, uh, you know, when you have a bad day, you know, there's, there, you should just keep, keep going forward. The Haloti Nata Foundation learned about Nixon's story and wanted to give him and his family a vacation they would never forget. They were invited to Philadelphia to be Haloti's guest at an Eagles game. They were so warm and so welcoming. They were just like family. Like, we just, we love them. The kids had fun playing together, um, just goofing off. It was, it was incredible. They took all the stuff that you've been dealing with for a little while and they just kind of allowed you to forget about that and their their entire family their kids uh, i mean they're just just remarkable people and haloti and christina are just amazing it's just nice to get away and spend time together as a family um when your child is doing chemotherapy your family split, split up usually one parent is staying with the child in the hospital and the other parent is trying to round up everything on the other end so we missed family vacations we were planning on due together. We missed just everything. I mean, we were in the hospital every week. And so just ha being able to just kind of make up for lost time and just build those memories together and kind of just be carefree and just enjoy one another's time, it really helps like just in healing and just being together. We got to go and see the Rocky statue and the Rocky stairs. I met him in the hospital, and then I got to go on the field on the game. He was big and tall. Nixon's battle continues. This experience and the love and support of so many have helped him and his family fight on. There have been so many um, incredible incredible things happen with people and not only in the community but throughout the entire country you know there there are definitely some days early on when we found out that just you know were just struggles and so um i mean i just feel so blessed i can't i, I can't honestly express my appreciation and love enough sometimes when you just think oh we can't do this again or this is getting so hard you'll remember something that somebody sent you or something that somebody's done for you and you just think of Nixon and just keep going. Nixon is adjusting to life with his blade and treatment is going very well. For more on the It's Not a Dream event and the rest of the great work done by the Nada Family Foundation, go to their website, nadafoundation.com. All right, Jeremiah, thank you. Nixon, what a stud of a little guy he is and what Haloti is doing for these kids. It's like his own Make-A-Wish foundation just for yeah. his foundation. It, it's truly amazing and, and something that uh, they'll remember forever. You can see why he was the NFL Man of the yeah. Year last right. January. I mean, he's uh, an elite human being, and, and a shout-out to the family. Nixon, yeah. seriously, what a stud. That's right. Nixon, uh, best of luck to you. For Absolutely. Now. All right, now back to uh, basketball, including today's win in Minnesota. Jazz went 3-1 and one for the week. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Nine wins in the last ten, even better, and that has Jazz fans ecstatic. The one loss in that stretch tips off an otherwise stellar Jazz Rewind. One day when the glory I have a dream that will be one day will be this nation out. will Live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident 
that all men are created to Ricky out six games with that right mild hamstring strain. Crowder, lob it inside, phase in traffic. Kick it out, Ricky for three. Bang! There he is. Welcome back, Ricky Rubio. Inside, Turner back out to Leonard. Same spot, same result. McCollum, got it. Every possession counts, he'll drive, hang and hit. He, uh, he recognized it as well. He was kind of jogging the ball, then he went into sprint mode. And now you got a six-point lead. And Donovan has scored the last ten. Ten straight points for Mitchell. And the Jazz cut Portland's lead to six. Joe on a catch-and-shoot three. Up. And that's the way to start it, Jingle and Joe. Rubio gets one to go down. Oh, my. Nice no pass. Look. No looker. Ricky is one sharp cookie tonight. And Gobert on the board. Uh oh watch out. Fades a uh oh Now, Plumlee, did he throw a punch? We've got some troubles down on that baseline, and we got everybody running. Matt, that escalated very quickly. A couple players will probably be thrown from this game. Here's Donovan straight away. Three. Bang. Jazz pump up a three. Donovan comes right back at you. Ricky Why not? out to Donovan. Yeah! He's got rhythm. We're not kidding. Slides in, takes the three. Inside, Jokic dumps it down low on the baseline. Rudy got a piece. Donovan falls out of bounds, and a foul. The dominator, Rudy. So security was trying to catch him, and all of a sudden, Jazz Bear came to the rescue. Donovan inside, and he draws the foul. That's five and a quarter. Donovan, baseball strike, Niang, up, bang! Front of us, that was thread to a needle. Yes, he is. Now we got a technical foul whistled up on Taj Gibson. He's going out. Well, I tell you, look at going. this. They're tossing him out. Wow. Tolliver deep. A Tolliver drains it. Tolliver three. Joe nearly got the steal. Six to shoot. Down to five. Tolliver short. Mitchell rebounds and a foul with a second to play. You're going to get credit for that block shot. Defensive player of the year. He fires it. Porter launches. Got it! 1.6 seconds left. Utah State by two. Yesterday, Utah State's Abel Porter hit a huge three with 1.6 seconds left to give Utah State a win in the pit against New Mexico. Porter, a walk-on from Davis High School, just received a scholarship two days earlier. How's that for a thank you? Thank you very much. Now, this is not the first time that Abel Porter has hit a game winner. Thanks to 1-800-GOT-JUNK, we dust off the archives and go back to 2012. Let's go. Abel Porter with the ball in his hands. Final seconds for the Davis darts. Yeah, there it is. Porter with the half quarter to beat Olympus. And seven years later, he did it again for the Aggies. Hey, Porter isn't the only Utah player to hit a game winner in the pit. Let's rewind to 1983 after New Mexico hit this three to take a one-point lead. Show me Utah's pace, Mannion. Pace! Where are you? Going the length of the court. Four, three, for two. For the game winner at the buzzer. Another last-second win in the pit. Rod, how about the uniforms as well? Of course, man. You have to look in the mirror and make sure everything's <laughs> properly placed with those <laughs> uniforms, you know? We used to do that all the time. The tighter, the better, you know? Hey, I, like I said, Rod, Rod loves them, man. Well, that's my era. Yeah, let's go. All right. Hey, the best fencers in the world are in Salt Lake this weekend for the World Cup Gold Tournament in the Salt Palace. Yeah, unique stuff. Former Olympic champions, including those who will compete in the Tokyo Olympic Games in less than two years, are all here. Yeah, we sent our uh, sports photographer, Jay Dorch, back to give us an up-close and personal look at the best fencers in the world. 
Saber is very interesting. It's quick, it's fast, it's very energized, very loud. You'll hear a lot of yelling with it. I think it's, you know, the most classic way of describing it as a physical chess game. Saber is all over the place. They're jumping, they're moving back and forth, they're leaping backwards and then coming forwards. It's very um, physically energetic and aggressive. When I was little, I, I would tell everybody it was hitting other kids with metal sticks and not getting in trouble was pretty, pretty spot on for me. <laughs> so if you think of uh, Captain Hook's sword that's got the large kind of bell guard that curves around. Captain Hook's sword is actually a saber. Japan, prepare to meet thy doom. Dark and sinister man, have at thee. In Star Wars, the lightsaber, um, it's got a different bottom, so it doesn't have the bell guard like Captain Hook's sword. Only a master of evil does. My name is Nemo Montoya, prepare to die. But, um, you know, that's the most classic one, but <laughs> I love the whole movie. <laughs> Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Well, Princess Bride, there's a lot of sword fighting, and it's really good, by the way. It's accurate in that movie. We have over 32 countries here um, from all over the world for a Women's Saber World Cup. We're super excited to be here. Tokyo 20 hopeful, um, 2016 bronze medalist um, with the team event. A lot of these are Olympians from past Olympic Games, and m almost all of them wa want to try and make it to the next Olympic Games. Check out U.S. fencing and support us, and we're all, you know, striving for some gold medals when we go to Tokyo, and I think we have an awesome team going in, and, you know, check us out. <laughs> You know, a uh, few years back, I put on the fencing suit and tried a little bit. You know, that is very difficult. And I, I had a new perspective for what these uh, people go through. That is tough. Rod, I'm just glad you're alive. Yeah, well, <laughs> they, were, they were very kind. <laughs> hey, uh, we had a good week of high school hoops this past week. A wild battle for first in a number of different regions. And a rematch of last year's 6A championship game. Stay with us. High school hoops this week, and it was a crazy week for the Jordan Beat Diggers in Region 7. Yeah, the Diggers on both sides of buzzer beaters this week, beginning with Tuesday. Jordan at Brighton. Beat Diggers down one with less than a minute to play. Jordan's Dyson Kohler drives to the rim and scores. He had 29 points. Brighton now down two with nine seconds left. Adrian Hadzaselmovich brings up the ball to Adam Templeton for the win. There's a party at Adam's house. His only made shot of the game. Brighton students going nuts. Jordan loses a heartbreaker. So Friday, though, a different story against Corner Canyon. Fourth quarter, three minutes to go. Corner Canyon's Gabe Toombs. The and one puts Chargers up seven. But Jordan would keep chipping away. Taryn Mosley cuts the lead to one. Jordan would later tie it with the free throw. So five seconds left, Dyson Kohler for Jordan. Deep! Okay. Ball game. And now Jordan crushed a couple of nights earlier. They get to celebrate the buzzer beater, 58-55. Ladies age 15 to 18 approved. Region 4, American Fork at Westlake. Thunder started 12 and hope they lost four of the last five. Here's Tred and Christensen using the Euro step for the lay-in. Cavemen lived above the rim, however. Isaac Johnson throws down the alley-oop. Hey, that was fun. Why not do it again? Less than a minute later, Johnson. The cavemen building a 10-point lead at halftime. Thunder trying to shoot their way back into this one. Jared McGregor, one of his six threes, but they couldn't keep up with American Fork. Trey Stewart, alley-oop dunk. I'm sensing a trend, Rod. Yes. Here it is again. Trey Stewart, dunk you very much. Oh, I see now. Fourth quarter. If some Trey Stewart is good, more is better. No alley-oop needed, however, for that hammer. Did you just say dunk you very much? Yeah, 29. Caveman went 85-71. They're now 16-1. and one. Friday night featured a rematch of last year's 6A state championship. Solid game. Defending, lone, defending champ Lone Peak, rather, visiting runner-up Pleasant Grove. And the Vikings up 12 at the half. 
Pleasant Grove building on the lead. BYU commit Casey Brown, the teardrop. Then Tyler Fairbanks dials up a three. All three of those. Kale Mickelson from the top of the arc. This game's easy. And Mickelson finds future Ute Matt Van Komen for the alley-oop. Van Komen! That put the Vikings up 21, but Lone Peak, they're not done yet. They respond. Sean Haskett and a foul. Haskett for the basket. Noah Smithson from the wing. Lead down to nine just like that. I got nothing for that one. <laughs> Fairbanks would answer with a three to push the lead back up to a dozen. From Anchorage. Get it? I do. How about Pleasant Grove? They hold on to win 68-58. Region 10 undefeated Orem hosting 4-1 Payson. Orem's Taft Mitchell opens up with the three ball. He finished with 34. Payson. Uh, Cade Raleigh, it also go deep. Uh, count okay, that one. Yeah, yeah. Ethan Slade. He's a thief. He had 17 and Tigers. They made perfect in region play with a 14-point win. Play of the week, potentially. Might be from Tuesday. Fremont's Dallin Hall behind the back to Baylor Harrop for the dunk. Dunk you very much. Yes, indeed, Rod. The two combined for 47 points. Silver Wolves win big over Clearfield, 76-52. Layton looking to stop Fremont's win streak. Lancers kept up with Fremont with strong defense. The entire way, hosting that block party for the Silver Wolves. Leighton led by four going into the final quarter. Tanner Kofod, he led all scorers with 19 points. Fremont fought back in the fourth. Here comes a steal. What are we going to say? Well, it's, it has to Baylor be. Baylor Harrop. Dunk you very much on an alley oop. Oh, OK. Silver Wolves, <laughs> you youngins with all your slang. Uh, outscore the Lancers 14, uh, Lancers 14 5 in the fourth to get their sixth straight win. Okay, now this kid isn't on the varsity team yet, but he has one of the great clips of the week. That's coming up next. You'll see it. Great clips of the week. Four minute drought as Lillard air balls one. Monday against the Blazers, Kyle Korver grabbed Damian Lillard's air ball, proceeded in to inbounds the ball. Well, that's a turnover on Kyle, and you know what? He knew it. My he bad. Got a good laugh out of it. Hey, if you can't laugh at yourself, <laughs> somebody else will. Lillard shot it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I thought he probably made it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got all that respect for him. And where it drops, I was just assuming I was trying to box somebody out, and it was falling right there, and I figured it went in. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to the pool. It's my first time, you know, so it's all right. Now, not only his reaction, but <laughs> Crowder's reaction. Amazing. Friday night before tip-off with the T-Wolves, uh, Jazz Bear to the rescue. A bat flies into Vivin Smart Home Arena and after terrorizing a couple of ushers and Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> Jazz Bear, hey, can your mascot do that? Nope. Rescue that was over. scary. I, I'm not, I was not cool with that <laughs> at all. Uh, I'm glad the bear got him because I would not have finished my warm up. I would have went to the locker room if he was still out there. Ramey shots for everyone. All right, here's a shout out. Tuesday at Harriman High, jazz players Epe Udo and Tyler Cavanaugh surprising members of Harriman's Hope Squad before the game. The Hope Squad seeks to reduce self destructive behavior and use suicide. These students are trained to watch for at risk students, providing friendship and I. Identity, uh, identify warning signs. They were awarded hats and tickets to a jazz game and got to meet some of the jazz players. Great awesome stuff. That, yeah. Riverton and Harriman freshman game to determine the number one seed for the playoffs. Final seconds. Harriman up two. Riverton's Parker Goff from half court. Uh -huh. <laughs> Have a night, son. Riverton wins 35 34. He wears number 35. All right, the Mavericks' Luka Doncic, after missing the desperation heave, uh, watch what he does. Arrgh. Okay, have you ever tried to rip a jersey? That takes strength. They're not tearaway jerseys. <laughs> I, huh? I have not. I, I have mean, not, it's like Lou it. Ferrigno it. You don't even know what Lou Ferrigno is? <laughs> I know who Lou Ferrigno is. You weren't even born. The Hulk, he, man, let's go. He, he and Bill Bixby uh, traded uh, personalities. <laughs> All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, Spencer. Pleasure. Thanks, man. See ya. See ya.